Hey, I'm Zachary Cowan, the author of the Study Daily Books, and thanks for joining me for a look at Doctrine and Covenants, section 44 of the Doctrine and Covenants. So verses 1 through 3 start off with this great promise about what you will get as you participate in the different conferences that the church has. So you have general conferences, state conferences, ward conferences. And all of these conferences, here it is. The Lord's promise in verse 2 is that his spirit will be poured out upon you. And then in verse 3, you might go forward and be able to teach with greater power. So when's the last time you felt that during a conference? Either a general conference, state conference, or a ward conference. You felt the spirit of the Lord poured out upon you. I frequently feel that that it may be the greatest thing that I do feel when we meet and gather at conferences is the Spirit of the Lord poured out upon us. Okay, in verses 4 and 5 of section 44, the Lord promises and says, I want you to keep the laws of the land. By doing this, your enemies will have no power over you. So that because of this promise, the church works really hard. In fact, they have a legal department, not only to keep the laws of the United States, but in every land therein, the church works really hard to keep the laws of that land so that the protection comes that's promised in verses 4 and 5. Now, it's not the same kind of protection that we get from keeping commandments, but it is protection nonetheless, and especially to make sure that the church is not conquered, that the church isn't being sued. In fact, I heard a person of the legal department one time say, it would surprise you how much of the church is tithing money has to go to protecting the church from legal disputes, people who are trying to steal by suing the church. So in verses 4 through 5, the church is diligent about keeping those laws so that it might be protected from its enemies. Now, verse 6 is really cool. Verse 6 says this, Behold, I say unto you, that you must visit the poor and the needy and administer to the relief that they may be kept until all things may be done according to my law, which you have received. Amen. Notice that the Lord is pretty serious and adamant about this. He must take care of the poor. You must administer their needs. Is there any way other than really administering? Not just like, yes, we minister, but also we have to administer carefully. We have to be careful about how we take care of the poor in order to really have their needs met. So consider, what are all of the different ways that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints tries to administer relief to the poor, the sick, and the needy. And to know that when you pay your tithing and your fast offerings and your humanitarian aid, you are a part of that relief, which must happen. All Christians, or people who seek to call themselves Christians, must take care of the poor. This is among one of the chief things the Lord has asked us to do. God bless you as you do administer that. We must administer it in order to bring salvation to them and to us. Hey, thanks for studying. We'll see you next time.